I stumbled through the door, mentally exhausted and physically weak. The door behind me closed and I realised where I was. I was outside. Not outside like room 5, but actually outside. My eyes stung. I wanted to cry. I fell to my knees and tried, but I couldn't. I was finally out of that hell. I didn't even care about the prize I was promised. I turned and saw that the door I just went through was the entrance. I walked to my car and drove home, thinking of how nice a shower sounded. As I pulled up to my house, I felt uneasy. The joy of leaving No End House had faded and dread was slowly building in my stomach. I, I shook it off as residual from the house and made my way to the front door. I entered and immediately went up to my room. There on my bed was my cat, Baskerville. He was the first living thing I had seen all night and I reached to pet him. He hissed and swiped at my hand. I recoiled in shock, as he had never acted like that. I thought, whatever, he's an old cat. I jumped in the shower and got ready for what I was expecting to be a sleepless night. After my shower, I went to the kitchen to make something to eat. I descended the stairs and turned into the family room. What I saw would be forever burned into my mind. However, my parents were lying on the ground, naked and covered in blood. They were mutilated to near unidentifiable states. Their limbs were removed and placed next to their bodies and their heads were placed on their chests facing me. The most unsettling part was their expressions. They were smiling, as though they were happy to see me. I vomited and sobbed there in the living room. I didn't know what had happened. They didn't even live with me at the time. I was a mess. Then I saw it. A door that was never there before. A door with a large eight scrawled on it in blood. I was still in the house. I was standing in my family room, but I was in room seven. The faces of my parents smiled wider as I realized this. They were my parents. They couldn't be, but they looked exactly like them. The door marked eight was across the room behind the mutilated bodies in front of me. I knew I had to move on, but at that moment I gave up. The smiling faces tore into my mind. They grounded me where I stood. I vomited again and nearly collapsed. Then the hum returned. It was louder than ever and I filled the house and shook the walls. The hum compelled me to walk. I began to walk slowly, making my way closer to the door and the bodies. I could barely stand, let alone walk, and the closer I got to my parents, the closer I came to suicide. The walls were now shaking so hard that it seemed as though they were going to crumble. But still, the faces smiled at me. As I inched closer, their eyes followed me. I was now between the two bodies, a few feet away from the door. The dismembered hands clawed their way across the carpet towards me, all while their faces continued to stare. New terror washed over me and I walked faster. I didn't want to hear them speak. I didn't want the voices to match those of my parents. They began to open their mouths and the hands were inches from my feet. In a dash of desperation I lunged towards the door, threw it open and slammed it behind me. Room 8 I was done. After what I had just experienced, I knew there wasn't anything else this fucking house could throw at me that I couldn't live through. There was nothing short of the fires of hell 
that I wasn't ready for. Unfortunately, I underestimated the abilities of No End House. Unfortunately, things got more disturbing, more terrifying, and more unspeakable in room 8.